Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Father David here for another reflection on our scripture readings for this week. Uh, if you like what we're offering in this quarter of the family of God, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to receive updates on when new content is added. All right, so I'll share my screen with you to show us our scripture reading. Great. So it's confusion, anxiety, and grief on the road to Emmaus for the third Sunday of Easter. And our scripture today comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 19 and 27 through 35. And on that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking to each other about everything that had happened. And while they were discussing these things, Jesus himself had arrived and joined them on their journey, and they were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, Why are you talking about as you walk along? And they stopped, and their faces were downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things about Jesus of Nazareth. And after he had listened to their story about how Jesus was betrayed, suffered, and died, he then interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scripture, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. And when they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he were going on ahead. But they encouraged him, saying, Stay with us. It is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. The Gospel of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I have two cats, and they notice every little thing down to the very last detail, and often before I do. And one night last week while watching TV, the cats went on high alert and started chasing something around the house. And after a few minutes, I realized that it was a bug. Their hunting instinct had taken over, and as soon as they noticed this small little bug hanging out on a lampshade, our house turned into a set of Animal Planet, and featuring the mighty hunters, Abby and Spike, bending off the intrusion of the common stink bug into their territory. Maybe you've started to notice some of the little things, too, that you may not have noticed before, like the sounds of birds chirping every morning to tell us that it's spring, or if you live near a train station like I do, you can tell whether or not the train's running on time by the whistle, and you don't even have to look at your watch. So today's gospel lesson had me noticing some of the little things that hadn't struck me before. And normally, at least in my own tradition, when this lesson comes around on a Sunday, we are treated to a sermon about how Christ is present and makes himself known to us in the Eucharist, but that didn't seem appropriate to talk about today. So today, I invite us to take a step back and then re-enter the story of what happened on the road to Emmaus and take note of some things that we may not have noticed before, things that we can only see because our perspective has changed. For one thing, the passage starts with the phrase, on the same day, and that phrase tells us that it is still the first Easter morning. And Jesus is still making his initial rounds, telling the disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he decides to join this particular group of travelers and while well, he's going about incognito. So he's hiding from them who he is. Perhaps we might be able to identify with these travelers in some way, for they are grieving and coping with the loss of their old way of life. They're trying to get their head around the facts that their hopes for the future have been changed instantly. I mean, our travelers are, in a word, traumatized. And they're not sure what to do after the events in Jerusalem last week, where the one upon whom they had pinned all their hopes and dreams 
had been betrayed by their own people and crucified. So they do the only thing they feel like they can do. They begin the journey back home, feeling very uncertain about their present and their future. For ourselves, we can certainly have our own hopes and dreams still, but we cannot say with any degree of certainty when we can begin to hope those dreams will be realized. The best we can do for taking that vacation or starting that class or even doing something you know, we might consider normal, like going out to eat or starting a new job, as something that will happen someday. Sometimes it seems the only certain thing there is is that there is no certainty. Even though it is definitely spring in my neck of the woods in central Virginia, the weather has been kind of uncertain of late. I mean, I think just last week we hit about every season from frost on the windows in the morning to almost summer-like humidity in the evening, and then we had fall breezes all in the span of three days. To be sure, we are certain where we are going to spend the bulk of our time today and actually every day for the foreseeable future. And we can make little plans of things to do walking around the neighborhood or in the yard or other things to pass the time when we are not working. But we are still adjusting to our new reality, just as the traveling disciples are. They are confused, bewildered, and grieving, just like us, but for different reasons. We know that Jesus is traveling with us, but it feels like it can be difficult to recognize him. It can be difficult to trust that somehow God is in the middle of all of this when it can sometimes feel like that everything that we have been working for or working towards is now on an indefinite hold. And like Cleopas and his friends, we hear that it is Easter, but somehow it just doesn't feel like it yet. But yet, we somehow are still to trust that Christ is with us. So it might be worth asking, how might Jesus be traveling incognito with us during these uncertain times? And even if we were to recognize him, what difference does it make to us that Christ is risen in a world that is deep in the clutches of paralysis and sickness and death? How can we recognize the presence of Christ in the absence of the things we are used to using as the touchstones of our faith? There's a few things we can notice in our story today. One is that Jesus gives the disciples time to grieve. He lets them get their story out. And as we are able to get our own hearts and minds around the situation in which we find ourselves, it is becoming more important to tell our own stories about that time and to grieve what we have lost. Another is that Jesus reveals himself to the disciples in their own home. In the middle of their despair and the difficulty to trust that God has not abandoned them, Jesus shows up in their homes and he reveals himself. He shows that he has been with them all of this time. He delivers the disciples, the travelers from their grief by walking with them through their grief. And in an act of grace, he doesn't belittle the disciples, but he blesses them by spending time with them and sharing his presence through a meal. Life emerging from death, hope emerging from despair, and grace dispensed in the time of difficulty are central themes of how the people of God travel together on the road of discipleship. If you look at Psalm 116, you hear of the psalmist and how he was traveling through the deepest and darkest of the valleys of the shadow of death, but God walked with the psalmist through it and brought them to the other side to a place of peace and joy and thanksgiving. And as we take walks in our own neighborhoods, we can see and hear the handiwork of God in the green foliage, the beauty of flowers, and the chirping of birds. And through an act of grace, we sense the presence of God around us, and we don't have to feel so alone. And there's also grace in the fact that our time of distance and separateness is happening now, rather than five or even ten years ago when the technology to see as well as hear each other was still in the realm of science fiction, or at least in the realm of big business or big media. 
many of us now wear masks in public to protect ourselves and to protect each other. And I wonder sometimes how these visible and tangible masks might be reflections of the invisible masks we always wore in public, masks which hid pieces of who we really are. And just as our own visible masks slip down from time to time, we find that our invisible public masks, for better or for worse, are now slipping. Through video conferencing, we see our pets and our children inviting themselves into our new home offices. Our friends and our colleagues now know if someone's cooking dinner, if we didn't bother to brush our hair, or if we didn't bother to clean off the couch. And in some ways, we know things about each other we didn't know before, like how our houses are decorated. I mean, there's grace in the fact that we are getting intimate glimpses of each other's lives as we rush from video conference to video conference while seated at our own tables, and then our pets and our children come up to bless us with their presence to join us for parts of our workday. My dear friends in Christ, whom I miss being with very, very much, while the future will continue to be uncertain, we can be certain that the presence of Christ does remain with us, even if we do not recognize him yet. On the road to Emmaus, we can be reminded that dealing with confused, bewildered, and grieving travelers and disciples has been Jesus' way of walking with his people since the day he stepped out of the tomb. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to the disciples in breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Give us the courage and strength to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and a gift of joy and wonder in all of your work. Through that same Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Again, if you like what we have to offer in this corner of the family of God, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any comments or suggestions on content, please leave them below in the comment section. And if you would like to submit some content yourself, we might be able to work something out. So please leave that suggestion below as well. All right, my friends, I look forward to being with you again really soon. All best and take care.